Throughout Britain, men and women are foregoing the 9 to 5 jobs introduced during the Industrial Age as they embrace new technologies within the digital revolution. And these two chaps are here to help. Welcome to the Powerful Nonsense Podcast, the show about mindfulness and entrepreneurship in the digital economy. With your hosts, Wayne Ingram and Jeff Yildiz. Sup, guys? Hello, everybody. It's Powerful Nonsense time. That time of the week. Yeah, Friday morning, if you're listening. Could be Tuesday, just after. could be Wednesday. But a lot of you listen on a Monday. Yeah. We notice. Mm. So, probably Monday morning. We're spying, we know when you're yeah. listening. We know this shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching you. Uh, welcome, guys, to another great episode. Yeah, preempted. Preempted. <laughs> predetermined good episode we've created the vision we know what we're working towards yeah um but first of all gotta mention we've been working pretty hard to take things next level i think you've been working pretty hard wayne which is is weird to say (laughs) (laughs) would you know what screw you (laughs) no you've done a great job thanks uh yeah if you've not seen if you've not been keeping your eyes peeled uh you may notice new logos new images new website Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been trying to make things a little bit user-friendly, taking things to the next level. I love the new logo. Me too. I love think it's really it. cool. Love um, the new website as well. Try to say so. Yeah, yeah, I love the I love the color scheme. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. So if you haven't checked it out, head on over to powerfulnonsense dot com. Um, you can listen to all of the episodes straight in the oh, homepage. Yeah, on the now, homepage, which is really cool. We've um, used Pat Flynn's smart podcast player. We invested in that for you guys to make it easy for you. And it's bloody good. Mm-hmm. If you don't know Pat Flynn, you should. Uh, check out his podcasts. Yep. There's three that I listen to. Ask Pat. Ask Pat. Smart Passive Income. Ask Pat. I said ask. I'm from Birmingham. Ask Pat. Ask. Ask Pat. Um, Smart Passive Income and uh, One Day Business Breakthrough or One Day BB. Mm-hmm. I think is how it's on iTunes so check that out but yeah pod- podcast player is good website is good let um, us know what you think as well if you think yeah. well if you think it's good or you think there's something we're missing like let us know we'd love mm-hmm. to hear some feedback it also makes Wayne feel really good that he done a good job on yeah. putting the website together yeah so yeah just check that out and just have a look um, but we're not here to talk about the website today we are talk- here to talk about fear and complacency mm-hmm. that's what we are on today um I think it's a big issue. I think it's a massive issue. I think it I is, know, it, I it is, with it, it a lot. I think every, <laughs> it's not like a disease. I think it's just natural for everybody to suffer from it, to be mm. honest. I think it is, that's it. And I think if you look at any sort of like um, entrepreneurial websites, magazines, it seems to be that that's the one thing that everybody focuses on is mm-hmm. on that fear because I think we all know that that's, that's the key to whether you even start. And I think the biggest thing for us when you're starting out is 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 how can you actually start taking action there's that fear straight away and it comes from many different places i think often i mean i've, I've been to a talk recently with um philip mckernan with london real and i think everybody you speak everybody who's at the event myself um everybody underneath with what they want to actually do or what they want to achieve whether it's their business whether they want to quit their job whether they want to I don't know, change their lives for the better. It always starts from they have a fear. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the time, like, it, it was interesting because everybody, there's so many people doing different things. Some people doing the things other people want to be doing. But it's funny how fear tends to be uh, very unique to the person. So what yeah. might be a fear to you would be very easy for me. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how, in some ways, we kind of create our own, um, create our own fears, create uh-huh. the story that develops our fears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting the fact that it comes in so many forms um, for different people and for different scenarios as well. I mean, I know that I have a fear of lack of control. That's like one of my biggest fears. Do you know what? Saying that, I think that is actually... It, I think that is actually one of the most common fe- um, fears. I think that is the root of a lot of fear uh-huh. is the control. If you look at anything that anybody does, like someone says, well, I don't like, I don't like flying on airplanes so much. Uh-huh. But part of that is my lack of control. Uh-huh. I don't control the plane. I don't tell whether it's definitely going to land or definitely right. going to take yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got other people who say, well, I would never jump out of an airplane. But because in that moment when you jump, you've totally lost control. That's true. And so I think a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic, a lot of fear, even when you say like if you're venturing into entrepreneurship, really, 
the the reason why it feels so scary is because there is no definite place you're heading so there's already a lack of control because you want to know that if i if i if i take the leap i'm going to land on ground or i'm mm-hmm. going to land somewhere and so i think i think actually that's a good point i think a lot of fear stems from that lack of control mm-hmm. and i think as human beings i think we're wired to kind of uh, feel secure and feel uh-huh. that we have it, we want some structure but it's funny at the same time we we love spontaneity mm-hmm. so it's such a juxtaposition really yeah i was just about to say because there are some people that thrive on lack of control they love the chaos of not being in control and just things happening and seeing what happens because assuming that science is correct that's how we've all got here in the first place no Mm -hmm. control just complete and utter chaos which has created life and everything i mean that's getting deep yeah but it's part of that evolution isn't it it's kind of like unless you decided to get out of the water how would you Uh, how would you have developed for the land it's kind of like that's such a good point that's a really good point (laughs) and i think it's part of human instagram quote right? yeah there is i think it's part of human nature though it's kind of like we love that security but at the same time we crave and we need that sort of spontaneity that to move towards the fear and you kind of look at these people like man on a wire i don't know if you've seen the documentary but this guy bloody constantly wants to push oh you look at any oh extreme, yeah is that any... the guy that does uh, that yeah, uh, yeah, just walks, in, yeah. walks across skyscra- skyscrapers yeah, yeah. how high up are those skyscrapers ridiculous he's done it on mountain like up on like i don't know where it was but ridiculous but if you kind of look at these sort of people who kind of love pushing the edge it's kind of becomes part of their nature i mean uh-huh. it's quite addictive in nature as well i think that's why you get serial entrepreneurs because once they get a feel for fear like making that leap it can come become quite addictive but i think for a lot of people starting now there seems to be like nothing worse mm-hmm. than actually venturing off that cliff or walking that tightrope so yeah i think i think it's a really good point to, to make there is that que- i question a lot of what you're what you're trying to control really and i think really a lot of people in their day-to-day have got what seems to be a lot of control like we were Mm -hmm. saying earlier like you feel that you go to work at a certain time you come home at a certain time it was funny actually because I was um listening to Tim Ferriss podcast the other day and he was talking to a military guy and like he was saying how um he was saying like how could you compare being like a he was like a head of a team in the military he was like how do you compare that to say um somebody like Steve Jobs or someone who managed a business Mm -hmm. And he was saying military is a lot easier because there's a set, there's regulation. Everyone gets paid the same. You get told what to do. You wear the same stuff. You train the same way. You eat the same food. So there's such a, a lack of actual, like it's, it's way more structured. So the control is perfect, although they're put in volatile situations. Right. In the other part of their life, it's completely controlled. Yeah, I guess And so. so, but then if you go to a business person who's running a business, there's so many variables, way more uh-huh. variables and so it's, it kind of relates there, kind uh-huh. of like that. Again, it goes back to that control, really. Yeah, it was interesting as well, because actually this came up in conversation with us yesterday. And I was saying how recently I've kind of realised just how little control I have over so many things that stress me out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think once you kind of have that sort of mindful realisation that actually you're not really in that much control anyway ever ever um because i think we were talking relationships in that particular Uh area but i think it applies across the board when you realize just how little control you have anyway um it almost relieves that that fear a little bit because you go okay i barely have any control of this situation but what do i have control of and therefore what can i do like even even when uh you're on the tube or whatever and you get stuck and you're there for half an hour and you're getting stressed it's like i've got no control over this situation anyway the only thing i can control is how i deal with this yeah, situation. your reaction to being in that circumstance um, and you know if you've got your phone on you your ipad on you whatever and you need to get to work just do some work on your phone or on your ipad in that half hour be productive in that half hour read or listen to a podcast or whatever um you haven't got control of the situation but you've got control over how you react to it and um yeah I think that's uh, really a bit of an eye opener really Um, I want to talk about complacency Mm -hmm. because you said something which I thought was really interesting just before we hit record about complacency because I always say really interesting things so (laughs) (laughs) They, they come like (laughs) <laughs> once a week <laughs> that's good enough for me it's, it. it's, when we record these episodes that's the only time he says anything interesting and then after that it's, it's, he's it's, like it's, I'm done it's downhill from there <laughs> I'm out 
So, so what was you? Uh, yeah, you said um, that you thought complacency is just fear. Yeah, because I was saying to you, like, define complacency to me, mm-hmm. and you was. How did you sort of explain so that? So I said complacency is essentially comfort. Comfort, yeah, and that's again goes back to the first point you made about being in control. I think we all have this illusion of what we're currently doing. It's like that perfect structure makes you comfortable, and a lot of people don't really want to break that. Mm-hmm. And like we go, well, said, but then there's that, I like that intuition or something that underneath us kind of wants to, and it's kind uh-huh. of, I think complacency is a is a avoidance of of doing the mm-hmm. things you want to do, and it's. I I both agree and disagree with you. Um... Because I think you're right in that it is an avoidance because it's a that if it's don't broke if it ain't broke don't fix it mm-hmm. kind of scenario, but I would say that it isn't necessarily always stemming from fear. Um, I think well it's survival as well though because it's actually a good thing like being right. complete. It's the word complete is probably got my shit covered. Yeah, like, I don't need to worry about nothing, and I don't think that comes from a place of fear. That comes from a place of. Oh, I don't want to say complacency. But I think complacency has is again. It's one of those words that's a bit loaded. When you say complacent, Shall we ask Siri. Let's ask Siri on it. <laughs> Define the word complacency. Complacency means a feeling of smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Thank, smugness. Thanks, See, I didn't think it would be like so much of a smugness because I guess it. Oh, it's a kind of smugness in the thing in the sense that you kind of feel like you've got things covered, like things are done, things are working in order. And I think, to be honest, I think in today's economy, that's probably a really dangerous stance to have because mm. then you say, well, I've got some customers or I've got my job. I've been here for ten years, so it's more likely that on the eleventh year I'm still going to be here. But then we know people are being, I mean, I said to you today, like I bumped into a friend and I was coming home from doing some filming yesterday and it was lunchtime and I was like, oh, what are you doing at the train station this early? And she was like, well, I went into work and um, we everybody in the office just got told that the company's, um, everybody's been made redundant. And I think that's the bit where, okay, it was great that you were being complacent and you were kind of following this, um, like you knew that you knew the structure of your days, you knew what you needed to do. Mm-hmm. You got so comfortable with that routine mm-hmm. and then that one day just crops up where suddenly oh, you're redundant, and it's like, okay, that complacency now could be something that really damages you because what's the effect of um, of now having to totally change? What happens when there is no routine? What happens when there is no job? Mm-hmm. Do you lose your head? Do you go off the rails? And again, I mentioned it many times, but that goes back to like uh, Nassim Taleb's sort of book on anti-fragility because he says, I think complacency and doing the same thing over and over causes a fragility in the fact that... I was just thinking exactly the same Exactly. Thing. So if you're always doing the same thing, what happens... It's like anything. If you look at... I'm mean, into sport and stuff. It would be stupid of me to just do one kind of lifting because what happens if I'm in a situation where I have to run or I have to jump or I have to do something in a motion that's totally different to what I've been training for? So it's kind of like they play, play every sport so your body can move in, a, in many different planes of motion mm-hmm. it's the same with your life like if you're only doing the same thing over and over again then there's a danger that if, if something crops up and something changes then how do you deal with it and I think by tackling fear and by pushing yourself in areas that you, you don't usually do you kind of add to, then you become a little bit more anti-fragile you realise well if I'm out of work I can actually deal with this because I've had this uh, situation before and I think uh-huh. you just add more tools to your bag when you kind of face that fear. Yeah, it's it's interesting actually because um, I think, you know, when you look at it, even things like health, you know, you can... In fact, it was probably the same for me. I never used to have to worry about fitness because being an actor, being in a rehearsal room almost every day of the week, I was burning calories like a mother. Um, and so I could eat what I want and still remain slim and everybody used to be like how do you manage to eat so much crap and stay so thin I'm like I must just have good genes because he's just running his mouth off running his mouth off burning serious calories (laughs) yeah Yeah, but I don't think it it turns out it wasn't good genes it was just the fact that I was running around acting and Mm -hmm. didn't realise just how much I was burning and then I uh, moved to London and I first started doing call centre work and I spent all day every day sitting sitting on my ass and eating because I was bored (laughs) Um, and eating the same amount of crap that I'd normally eat but I wasn't burning it off and then I started to put on weight and I really started to notice it a couple of years ago and now I'm sorting my shit out 
But that came from a situation of complacency. It's like, well, I've always been slim, so I'm always going to be slim. Um, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So, and I don't think that came out of fear, because there was no fear of fitness. Even mm-hmm. when I was at uni, sometimes I did a fair bit of fitness. In fact, I had to every week. Um, so I had no fear of it. It's just I didn't really enjoy it. And so, well, if I I got more enjoyment, at least from a. Uh, dopamine rush <laughs> uh, I got more enjoyment from eating crap than I did doing the exercise and neither one seemed to make a massive difference either way so I just carried on and I think that's the difference between the fear and the complacency is is I don't need to change it so why should I change it but I do think sometimes I think like we've kind of covered a bit of the the, the key point of that kind of whole um, bit about control but like you said, there's certain things that are totally out of control. Like there's yeah. things that, like we said, in the relationships and stuff, there's stuff that is totally out of your control. But then I think the other part of the whole equation is the bit we don't see where there's a whole load of things that we assume are out of our control, but in fact are not out of our control. And I True. think that is the bit that probably holds a lot more people back. Because, yeah, fair enough, there are things you generally cannot control that are totally out of your boundary. But then I think the bits that stop people actually doing things is a huge lack of awareness uh-huh. and it's like well okay everybody says well maybe yeah I do want to start a business but they're in fear of well I can never create a business because I don't have a clue how to do it mm-hmm. and so they don't have an awareness of the of the steps to take to get to create that business and uh-huh. so instantly it becomes a fear because if you don't know what the hell you're doing mm-hmm. suddenly you you can't take action on it and one one thing in another thing that um I just want to uh, get this out before I forget it that um Philip McKernan was saying he was saying like in the one of his great quotes that is always um, known for saying is like in the absence of um clarity take action mm-hmm. and i think it's a great quote because i think that a lot of the time we we're in fear because we don't currently know what we should be doing uh-huh. when we're starting a business and so often it's kind of like, well, I don't know how to do this and I'm not really sure what to do, but you can take some action. And by taking that action, you now learn something more. So like we didn't, we were like that at the beginning, like we had no idea we'd been learning and stuff. So because we just didn't have a clue. And so instead of just saying, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm not going to do it. It's like, well, okay, maybe taking some action would be going to a business event or picking up a business book or downloading a podcast like Powerful Nonsense. And it's it's kind of like, it's it's that mentality as well, I think, a huge amount of fear again stems from assumptions it stems from those stories you tell yourself and it just it's a lot to do with awareness it's like mm-hmm. once you're aware that something's possible uh-huh. like they say when you read about successful people and the fact that they've achieved it under circumstances that are nothing like what you've got mm-hmm. it breaks first it breaks your it, it just destroys your story your stories are insignificant because this person was in this country with war and this and that going mm-hmm. on and they still managed to achieve something so that knocks your story out of the wall your excuses and then it comes down to like okay um i wasn't aware of how to start a business well then did you educate yourself on how to do it and then suddenly the fear it just fizzles away like it's always going to yeah. be there but usually i know people say like move towards the fear like f- f- follow the fear and all that sort of stuff and i think it's it's True, to be honest, it's a good point because mm-hmm. the fear is what's going to kind of poke you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, another thing that Philip McKenna was saying, I'm a bit of a fanboy at the moment, was kind of <laughs> like um, a lot of that fear is usually that intuition, really. Uh-huh. I think usually when you're fearing something, you actually, it's your body saying, like, or your, yeah, your intuition is saying, this is probably the thing that you should be pursuing. If you're afraid of starting a business, it could just be that your intuition is saying, look, the work you're doing currently is not f- uh, fulfilling you, it's not satisfying, it's um, it's already like, you feel that it's something breaking, it's not quite working, you don't know if you might be made redundant, and maybe that fear is saying, you know what, you need to take that leap, you mm-hmm. need to kind of pursue that thing that you want to do, because right now you're already living in fear, because you don't know whether your job's going to be here next week. So you might as well go for it. So mm-hmm. I think sometimes you've got to really like listen to that fear. And I think that's the the fascinating thing that that is what uh, distinguishes humans from any other creature in the animal kingdom, is I think as far as I'm aware, we're the only animals that would think like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're the only ones that would go, well, hang on, is what I'm doing right now fulfilling me? <laughs> um, because if it's not. I need to do something else. And I think the more and more you can embrace that, the more, basically, you're buying into human evolution, um, which can only be a good thing, right? 
presumably. Um, but also, uh, you used a lot of the sort of analogy of, of setting up a business. And I think this is where fear and complacency really do, really do meet. Um, because quite often, the thing that stops people from starting their own business is the fact they've got a day job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the complacency comes in and goes, well, my bills are covered. So I'm not going to worry. My bills are covered. Okay, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but my bills are covered. I don't have any fear of not being able to pay my rent. Uh, my bills are covered. I can get food. I can pay rent. I can pay my phone bill. I can pay my internet bill. All of that jazz. I am fine. Um, so the complacency is coming from the fear of not being able to uh, cover your needs. Um, but the fear is also there of, well, as you say, it's not fulfilling me, what I'm doing. Um, but I, So I could set up my own business and pursue what I really want to pursue, but if I do that, my bills might not be covered, I might not have a roof over my head, I might mm-hmm. not be able to pay that phone bill, blah, 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 blah. So that's where they do, do meet. In the uh, sort of scenario of your friend that just got made redundant, that's the moment where she might go, I might set up my own business because now I've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because now my bills aren't covered anyway. Um, So I could uh, go down the same route and do something that doesn't necessarily fulfill me and get my bills covered again. But I'm really just putting myself back into the same situation of complacency as I was before. Um, My bills are covered, but I'm not doing something that fulfills me. Or I could do something that fulfills me, take the risk because I've got nothing to lose anyway, take the risk and I might actually find myself in a much better situation than I was before. And I think when you release yourself of the fear that is causing the complacency and you accept the fact that the complacency is over, you've got nothing to fear anyway because you're in that situation and then you go, right, I've got neither fear nor complacency, so let's just go all in. I think that's where some magic can really happen. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that the thing that I think will hold people off from that situation who's someone who's being made redundant or kind of is yeah, getting kicked out of their job is the fact that we know how to apply for another job. We mm-hmm. don't know how to go out on our own, become a salesman, become a marketer, become a business person. And another thing I just wanted to really touch on is... I think a lot of the time saying start a business scares people. Mm-hmm. It's like a scary word because it means what? Do I have to have an office? Do I have to have employees? Do I have to have all this sort of stuff? And I think we're not talking in that sense. I think a lot of people forget the fact that, well, someone hired you for what you do. Yeah. So there's there's no reason why you can't get a couple of people to hire for you what you currently did before. And I think I think even that in itself is probably something that probably scares a lot of people. Say, so, well, start a business. Well, that sounds scary. What about mm-hmm. just view it as being um, hired by five different people who are your, who are your customers mm-hmm. that's a different way of looking at it but now you have a business because you're, you're, now, you're now the person who's providing a service to say five or six people uh-huh. and I think sometimes you've got to flip that as well and look at it in a different way and don't think of it okay if you're a businessman you don't have to wear a suit and tie a suitcase you have your own office you shout at people in the, in the workplace it's not mm-hmm. about that it's just kind of saying well actually I can spread what looks like a job into a, into several different people, and it's so much mm. more safer that way. I often think that employment and self-employment, particularly these days, is just a difference in mindset, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, yes, there are tax ramifications of being self-employed versus employed, presuming that your employees do any tax PAYE, but essentially, like I look at my day job, um, which is working on the reception at a hotel, and I like to look at it from the perspective of I, they are buying my services as a receptionist because they are. The difference is, is they're in complete control over when I work, how I work, etc., etc. Um, and also I don't have to deal with my tax from that employment. But other than that, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever in me being employed versus self-employed. I think it's a complete mindset. So if you're working in I don't know, data entry or whatever it is that you're doing. I picked a pretty shit job there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go with data entry because that's what came to mind. Oh, wow. You're working in data entry, right? Somebody's employed you to do that. You could just go self-employed and become a subcontractor for data entry. I mean, it'd be a really boring business and I can't see how that would ever I see, I see it being automated <laughs> in the future. <laughs> so. But, you know, it's, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is you dictate when you work, how you work, other than what's in the contract in your agreement, you dictate the rate of pay, and 
all of the other good quality stuff which comes with being self-employed. So I look at it from the perspective of if you're going through the employment route, chances are you're doing yourself a disservice and being paid less than you're worth. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, that whole self-employed um, employed kind of scenario is like when you when you mention it to people, the first thing they sort of say is, oh, it must be a pain in the ass working, doing all your taxes or doing the invoices or kind of, oh, you, you must not really know how much money you're getting at the end of the month, all this sort of stuff. And I think, again, that just goes straight back to the awareness because we know I was like that. I was like, what the hell am I going to do my taxes? Do it a couple of years in a row and then suddenly you're like, oh, it's really bloody easy and there's <laughs> nothing to worry about. I don't know what I was scared about and uh -huh. why the fuck didn't anybody tell me about this in the first place and how it can work in your favour sometimes. So, again, it's just that not knowing that, that fear that kind of just it holds you back from doing that, really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is there anything else that we need to cover? Not particularly. I think we covered a lot of points mm. there. I just think, yeah, fear fear is there for everybody. But, again, I think it's sometimes a beacon. It's a kind of yeah. like, it's, hey... Look, come this way. Yeah, look, come this me. this looks good. Or have you tried this out? Or uh -huh. maybe you should give this a go. And it's it's always there for a reason. It's there to protect you, but it's also there to push you. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it's all all a question really of being mindful. Are you being complacent? Are you acting out of fear? And if you if there is the red flag going, you're acting out of fear. Work out what that fear is and push against it. Yeah, like when you talk about mindfulness, it's just like. I think even just being able to question the fear itself, not just to accept it, to say, okay, I'm scared of this. Mm -hmm. Why am I scared of this? Mm -hmm. Just question it. Sit with the thought of why you're in fear. Mm -hmm. And then when you break it down, you'd be like, oh, well, does that stem from this thing that happened to me? Or does that stem from something else? Or like, you'll, you'll break it down to what it really is. I think a lot of the time it's just this sort of like... I don't know, it's like a little egg, in, it's like an eggshell and you kind yeah. of want to just, well, what's inside? Let me crack that fear and see where it's coming from, what it actually means, what it's trying to tell me. I think... Too many people just say, well, I'm afraid of this, and they don't mm -hmm. do it. And it, it completely goes into all areas of life as well. It's it's not just business, it's not just employment, it's relationships, it's social, it's financial, it's everything, health, mm -hmm. um, all that sort of stuff. And I think the more that you can be aware of just those two elements, your fear and your complacency, I think once you become aware of those, you will grow so much as a person because you'll catch yourself going, shit, I'm acting out of fear. Um, or God, I'm being complacent today, or whatever. That that day where you get up and you're like, I really need to get on with that that task, but do you know what? I can wait for tomorrow because I don't feel in the mood. Yes, that's procrastination, but that's also complacency because there's no sense of urgency there. And if there's no sense of urgency, that's where you kind of need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> there we have it. Another episode in the bag. In the proverbial bag mm -hmm. fear versus complacency yeah i thought it was quite interesting i think so too nice nice flow of conversation there as well i could just say so myself well we, we are up in our, our game um, we have said so we are, we are trying we're trying for you guys <laughs> speaking of trying we're trying for those itunes reviews <laughs> and we are getting we're really trying. good at that way you get really <laughs> these good. segues um, <laughs> it's becoming second nature to me yeah now you says these acting courses don't teach you anything <laughs> <laughs> but seriously we do need those reviews they help so much um just in getting the word out there for the show and also it makes people realize that you do know what we're talking about sometimes not all the time <laughs> Just sometimes. It'd be good to see the new logo popping up in the top bit of... Uh, yeah. That's what I really want to see, that really. That is what I'd really like to see. <laughs> We're doing all right on the charts, but we could be doing better. And the higher up on the charts we go, the more listeners we get, which means good stuff for everyone. Win-win. So please head on over to iTunes. Just leave a review. I'm not going to say my usual. I just want some honest reviews. Ah, oh, he's humbling as well. Yeah. See? Changing, this is crazy. I'm changing my tact. None of you are reviewing. <laughs> See, like, no. This arrogant bastard that always wants a five stars or more, what's he talking about? <laughs> but no, I say five stars or more, but genuinely, any honest reviews are welcome. Because even if they're not great reviews, it might mean we'll lose our five star podcast rating, but it means we can improve the show as well. So, any feedback, more than welcome. Also, we've put together some goodies for you guys. Uh, which we're quite excited about. Well, we got our own um, T-shirts through, didn't we? Oh, you t I was building that up. You just throw T-shirts out there. I was building it up and everything. Ah, oh, well, I thought... Really? I thought Spoilers! <laughs> Beep! <laughs> but we got some T-shirts. We got T-shirts. Uh, me and Gemma have got one of our own each. They look pretty swish. They're bloody good. They look pretty swish. So if you want one for yourself, you can buy them. 
head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash gear and you can have a look. There's four available. Uh, just the, the Powerful Nonsense text, the new text for the new logo in black or in white, and also with the little Matrix Man on top as well. I don't like I don't like calling him the Matrix Man, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's clearly obvious that that's what it's what it's based off, though, right? Yes. <laughs> we'll have to think up some other term for yeah. him, but for now, the Matrix Man with the headphones on. With the headphones on. Uh, so head on over powerfulnonsense.com forward slash gear check those out and if you want to buy one buy one it helps support the show and we'll love you long time yeah it'll mean a lot to us we'd love to see some pictures of some fans wearing a t-shirt yes we would yes we would (laughs) (laughs) other than ourselves other than ourselves yeah so yeah check those out thanks very much for listening guys we appreciate you very much and until next time bye see you soon (laughs) 